Hello out there. Hi worshipers. Hi worshipers. I am so excited that you decided to stop by my channel once again to share and, and embark on another adventure of the Sunday School lesson. We truly have an excellent lesson this, um, this week, this um, up and coming Sunday. And I just want to say thank you so much for my new subscribers. Whoop, whoop. I have some new subscribers. I especially want to give a quick shout out to Miss Pullings. She commented and said, told me last week that she is a new subscriber. And I am so happy and I'm mean, elated that you decided to join the Worship of Wins. Family, so glad you decided to join our family. Um, just a, a couple of quick announcements. The notes to the lesson will be in a link in the description section. All you have to do is just click that link, and it should carry you over to PayHip. PayHip is a secure site where you can leave a small donation uh, and utilize the notes for your personal study and or if you're a Sunday school teacher you can take the notes to your class and and just have an enriched and more involved Sunday school lesson amen also if you don't desire the lesson but but however this um this study has blessed you in some kind of way and you feel led by the spirit of God to leave a donation the link to um PayPal you can PayPal me at Worshippers Win. It will be in the description section along with the scripture uh, scriptures for this set for this lesson for this up and coming Sunday. Amen. For July eighth. Amen. So, like I said, I am so excited. I'm so excited that um, that you all have stopped by to study the Word of God with me. I am here to encourage and motivate you to want to know more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and just be motivated to learn and, and read your Bibles more. Amen. If you have a particular subject or a particular topic that you would like to discuss, go ahead and leave the comments in the comment section and or you can email me at worshiperswin at gmail.com. That's worshiperswin at gmail.com. And you can go ahead and email me and I will be more than um, excited to give an answer to a question or to uh, review a Bible verse. Or even if you have questions and you just don't want to leave a comment down below, you want to email me with a question or prayer or something like that, then uh, feel free to email me at worshipperswin at gmail.com. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive into this Sunday's lesson. I'm excited. <laughs> hey, so the title of our lesson for July the 8th, 2018 is Jesus Criticized Unjust Leaders. Our Bible basis is coming from Matthew 23rd chapter, the 1st through the 8th verse, and then it drops down to the 23rd and to the 26th verse. Our Bible truth, Jesus challenges unjust leaders to change or experience destruction. A memory verse. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. A lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will explain the difference between just and unjust actions. Reject becoming lie, the hypocrite. Reject becoming lie, the hypocritical scribe, and Pharisees, and explore ways to implement just leaders in our own lives. Amen. And the background scripture is the entire chapter of the of Matthew, the twenty third chapter. Amen. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of a, uh, introduction to our lesson, Jesus criticizes the teachers of the law, which is the Pharisees and Sadducees. Um. And he's talking to his disciples 
as well as a multitude of people. So it's just not a private teaching session between him and his disciples. There's a multitude, a big gathering of other people around him. Um, so he's letting them know that the Pharisees are unjust leaders. They, they, they say one thing, but they're doing something else. He's telling them to observe and obey the things that they say. But do not model or follow after their actions because they are not following after the word of God. Okay, they're not following after the teaching of Moses. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading our verses. Uh, I'm going to read Matthew 23, 1, 2, and 3. And it says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribe and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Amen. So in this verse, um, Jesus is just basically saying, uh, well, you know, this verse right here, when I think about this verse, it kind of reminds me, because uh, I come from a generation where the parents or the teachers or the, you know, just people who were in authority would say, do as I say and not as I do. So this, this, these verses kind of, this lesson kind of puts me in remembrance of what they used to say. Do as I say and not as I do. You know, they'll tell you, um, you shouldn't be smoking. Don't smoke, but yet they smoke two packs of cools. <laughs> in a day or you might not be out there drinking but they're drinking a fifth of liquor you know things like that so it, it just triggered when I read these verses it triggered my memory going back in the past when I was young uh, what I used to hear aunts uncles and you know uh, people uh, teachers and you know people in the church deacons okay they used to say this do as I say and not as I do you know but um, anyway um, let's stay on track here as mentioned before, Jesus is teaching his followers how, how much support to give to the teachers, the which were the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Um, he lets his followers know that they hold a very important position, a very important title of authority in the synagogue. The, the scripture just said that he sit, they sit in Moses' seat. So they have a responsibility to teach the law. They have a responsibility to, um, to, to exemplify the, the law and the teachings of Moses. Amen. But Jesus warned the people not to follow their, their example. Because they didn't follow their own teachings. They're saying one thing. And they're doing something else. Um, they're doing something else. Jesus, uh, Jesus warns against following the bad examples of those who accurately teach the law of God or the scriptures, but do not obey the law of God and the scriptures. Jesus would never want us to disobey God or the word of God to obey what someone else want us to do that was outside of scripture. So even if you, there's, you, you have a leader within your organization, if, he's, if they're asking you to do something that does not line up with the word of God, that is not of God. God does not want you to disobey his word to please or satisfy flesh. Amen. Amen. So that's just a little side note. Jesus does not require us to obey human traditions, especially if it neglects the word of God. See, you can't neglect the you 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 know, you're so busy um doing doing for the church. But yet you're neglecting your responsibility to feed the homeless. You're neglecting your responsibility to go and visit the sick and shut in. You're neglecting your responsibilities to pay your tithes and give an offering. Amen. That is not how God uh, want us to, to live in this world. We, you know, that is not how we're supposed to live as kingdom people. Because that's what we are. We Once you become born again, you are separated from the world. Cut out from among them and be ye separate. So we're separated from the world. Okay, we're set apart. We have been engrafted into the kingdom of God. Amen. So we are kingdom people and we walk in kingdom mindset, kingdom action, and we speak 
kingdom things. Amen. So verse uh, 4 says, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and they, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Isn't that something here? That, here God is telling telling the multitude and telling his disciples. Jesus is saying in his verse that the teachers of the law, they place heavy burdens on people. They weighing people down. They put in all these unrealistic expectations, human traditions, not the law, but human traditions on people and, and passing them off as thus said the Lord. See, they were wrong for that. So Jesus is saying the teachers are placing heavy burdens on people with their instructions, which were intolerable. They couldn't they couldn't do all of that. They loaded the people down with a lot of legalistic interpretations, their own interpretations, because their minds and their hearts was not right. It was not, you know, the Bible says, let this mind be in you as it also is in Christ Jesus. Okay, so their minds was not in, uh, in God, their minds was not of God. They had selfish motives, selfish intentions, and they were greedy. Amen. So Jesus is saying, you know, uh, letting them know that they ran you down with all these legalistic interpretations. But yet, they're not going to follow anything that they're telling you to do. But, you know, they're going to make you put a guilt trip on you if you don't follow it practically may even kill you, you know, if you don't follow what they say do, okay, but yet, they're not going to do it themselves, amen, saying one thing and doing another, how many of us know people like that, they say one thing and do another, watch people's actions, verse number five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments. So, um, phylacteries were prayer bands, okay? Prayer bands, and they were made of leather. And um, in the notes, I'll leave a picture, a photo of the phylacteries in the notes so that you can see it. Or you can go ahead and Google it yourself, and you can see what, 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 um, what, what they're talking about. It, it was bands that was made of leather and um, they wore the bands on their arms or they're tied around their foreheads and, and, and in the middle of the bands were little small boxes um, where they kept the morning or the evening prayer inside um, you know they, it was a square box about not so big you know it really wasn't big but you know um, they would put it here and then they would tie the leather um, strap around the head or they have the box here and then they strap the lace, the leather straps around their arms. Okay. So um but um but what Jesus is saying, uh so Jesus may mention that they widened the boxes. It was supposed to be smaller, but they widened it to make it look really big, okay? And, and then, um, not only did they widen their boxes, but the tassels on their prayer shawls, they made them longer, okay? And, and, and just, um, they, they, um, the, they widened the boxes. I mean, why? Why did they do all of this? Because they want to be seen of men. They want to be, they want to be made to appear to look holy. They wanted to appear to be set apart, but yet deep down inside in their heart of hearts and in their actions and their thought process, they were not uh, holy men of God. Amen. The Pharisees wanted the applause and the accolades of men and they wanted uh, and they weren't concerned in obeying God or focusing um, the people towards God. They were taking the glory of God and placing it upon itself. God is not going to share his glory with anybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not. So verse number 6 says, And the love of the uttermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats on, on the synagogues. So here, um, they wanted to be seated in, in the synagogues. They wanted the they want to be sit up high. 
They want to be sit up front. Why? So they can be seen of people. When they go to banquets, they want it to be honored and recognized. And they want it to sit in the recline in the in the in at the table at the reclining table. You know what I'm saying? When when um you you know you go to certain banquets, you know they got the, the big table for the big delegates and, 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 and dignitaries and things like that. They they wanted to sit up front where you know where every as soon as you walk through the door, we see the dignitaries right there. You know, the holy men of God. They that's what they wanted. That's that's what it all boiled down to. They wanted the glory. They wanted to be seen. They wanted people to praise and worship them. Amen. Verse number seven. And greetings in the markets and to be called men called of men rabbi. Rabbi, okay, the scribes and the Pharisees prided themselves on being teachers of the law for the masses, for the people, for the multitude. That's why they went into the marketplace all the time because that's where they people come to get their, you know, that's the supermarket, you know, the store. They, they, they that's where they do their willing and dealing as far as, you know, um, going into the marketplace to get their food, their clothing, the materials, whatever they needed. That's the marketplace. So, you know, um, they prided themselves on being teachers of the masses. Um, in the marketplace, they wanted to be saluted by the term rabbi, and which means my great one, my honorable sir, teacher. They wanted to be praised of men all the time. They wanted to be seen of men. They just, you know... You know how it is, you know, them pimp preachers driving in them big old Cadillacs with white walls and they jump out with the, you know what I mean. Okay, I don't even have to go there. <laughs> I don't even have to go there, but, you know. Amen. Verse 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for what is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren? So here Christ is telling them not to be not to call anyone rabbi because in this context in this context in this scripture and this lesson in this um, uh, uh, what he's saying um, he's, he, he's saying you know calling someone teacher I mean calling someone rabbi is actually calling them your master master teacher you know and and uh, Christ is letting them know that he is the master. Christ is our master. And in the kingdom of God, we all are brothers and sisters. You know, we all are brothers and sisters. You know, I'm no, no one no more special than the apostle or the prophet or whatever. We all are brothers and sisters. There is no hierarchy amongst believers in the kingdom of God. Okay, we all are little children, and we and, and the Bible even speaks of us as as behaving and and, and acting like little children. You know, um, and I know that you know um, some time ago that you, you used to always hear people say back in the day, um, "Touch not my anointed, touch not my anointed, touch not my anointed." But the reality of it is, is that we all are anointed. Because we all are saved. We all have been set aside. We all, those that are believers and that are truly walking, are Christians, which is Christ's life. We all have been set aside. We all have been purified. Amen. And we all have an assignment on our lives. Amen. Amen. So verse 23 goes and says, um, 23 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites for ye pay tithe of men and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone so Jesus is giving a warning here. He's saying Jesus is calling them, and Jesus is calling them a hypocrite. They wore two faces. They wore two faces to appear on the outside. On the outside, they wore a holy face. On the outside, they appear as something that they are not. On the out, on, uh, uh, on the inside, on the outside, they looking like they're holy, but on the inside, they're not. They display religiosity. They pay tithes. Okay. 
that that's you know you being religious. You paying tithes, but you neglecting the more important things, the weightier matters, like justice, like mercy, faith in God, showing this, showing these characteristics before the people. You you're not concerned with that. The teachers of the law, those who would fall under condemnation are the ones who did not rule rightly or teach or help their fellow Jews receive justice and mercy. They didn't teach and act upon the importance of living faithfully before God, as I mentioned before. They live for themselves instead of for God. They live for what what their um you know their their flashy attire and you know um, they live for what they can get and not for what they can give. Amen. Twenty four, ye blind guides with strain. I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Ye blind guides which strain a net and swallow a camel. Jesus is calling them blind guys. Spiritually blind. They spiritually blind. They didn't know. They spiritually blind. They didn't understand the purpose of the law. But yet, they're leaders of, of others. You're looking up to them to lead you to heaven. You're looking up to them to lead you in the right direction. So that they can um, reap rewards from the Lord. But they're blind. They're spiritually blind. This verse is saying straining at nets indicates straining at nets indicates that they treat minor issues as major issues. And swallowing camel means that they treat major issues as minor. I mean they focus on the little on the little outward matters regarding their traditions. See, their traditions were minor things. But they put it, they, they weighed the people down so heavy and they puffed it up. And it made it seem like that it was the word of God. And it was more important, see. Okay. They made their traditions uh, more important than the laws of Moses. Amen. The word of God. The commandments. And they make themselves look holy to others. While on, inside, on the inside, they were selfish. And they were sinful. And always looking for ways to cheat their neighbor to enrich themselves. They totally ignored Jesus. I'm sorry. They totally ignored uh, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. And they were trying to kill Jesus too. You see, they totally ignored what was right as a leader. As a leader, you know, as a leader, a religious leader, or a teacher of the law, you know, we see our brothers in need. We don't turn our backs on them. You know, we help them. Yes, sometimes some people may take advantage. But we pray about the situation, and you know, and, and just let you know, put it in the hands of the Lord. We don't really know, you, you know, you really don't know how a person is living or how what what a person is going through. But if they have enough confidence to come to you and say, "Hey, you know, I really need your help. Can you can you do this? Can you do that?" Then by all means, you know, it you know, pray about it, you know, act, help them if you can. You know, if you can't, then you find someone that can. You know, amen. So, um, let's see, verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes. Here's that warning again. Woe. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. 26. Thou blind Pharisees, Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So, here in these two verses, Jesus exposes their backwards behavior. Their behavior was backwards. Okay, they they you know just just the whole makeup, the whole persona, everything. It was just backwards, and he's exposing he's exposing them for who they really are. Um, they looked clean and holy on the outside, but on the inside, they were less concerned for others. They, like I said, they were greedy, selfish, and deceitful. As teachers of the law, the scribes and Pharisees fail at being role models. 
Amen. As leaders, we, you know, people look at us to rightfully divide the word of truth. People look at us to tell them the truth about the Bible, not to manipulate the Bible, to to get them to um, to get to get their money or to deceive them. That's not how. That's not the way that we are to do things. We're not to act that way. That is not what God is calling us as leaders to do. Amen. So once again, this was a beautiful lesson. As always. Sunday school lesson. I love to teach Sunday school. I love to teach. I love it to teach. So if you you listen, um, uh, study with me through the Sunday school lesson and you learn something, I would love to hear your feedbacks, your comments, because I love to teach. Um, some nuggets to take away from the lesson. The scribes and the Pharisees were called to simply love God and love others. But instead, they use their religious authority. And, 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 and unfortunately, in 2018, you have some leaders who are taking advantage of their authority. Okay? Um, so they, they use their religious authority to take advantage of people, to profit and lead people astray by not teaching the people to follow the law of Moses and the standards of God. And when you really think about it, in 2018, that's why a lot of individuals don't want to go to church. They say, you know, I, I'm a Christian, I, or they may say, I'm spiritual, and I can pray, and I can, uh, I can study the Word of God, and I can worship God at my home. I'm not going in that church. You know, that's because some leaders have taken advantage of their authority and taken advantage of people. Amen. People were thinking that you were one way. And in actuality, you were something totally different. They found out later. And their heart was hurt. Amen. We have to be careful with people. We have to be careful with a person's heart. Amen. Um, let's see. What else um, did I learn from this lesson? Um, lead people astray by teaching the people to follow the law of Moses and the standards of God. Instead, they forced heavy traditions on people and took glory from God and placed it upon themselves. They outwardly made themselves appear religious and holy, but inwardly or behind closed doors, they were liars, thieves, and murderers. Amen. Just as we are called to love God and love others, we too must take inventory of our life. Yes, we do. To ensure that we are not acting like the Pharisees, hypocritical especially us leaders. If we adhere to the law of, of love, we would understand just and unjust actions. And through the Holy Spirit, we can become commemorable leaders. Amen. Amen. So I really hope you've learned something from the lesson this week. Please use the notes to study from as well as to teach your Sunday school class. Amen. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Comment down there. It's okay. Go ahead and comment down in the comment section. I love to, to hear and, 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 and read what you are thinking. Amen. So until we meet again, I love you with the love of Christ. And I hope you have an excellent 4th of July. And I will see you at the next.